In one of my last videos, I showed you how a lessee would account for a finance lease under ASC 842, which is U.S. GAAP. But the lease I covered in that video did not contain a bargain purchase option. So what I want to do in this video is go through that same lease, but this time I'm going to add a bargain purchase option. And I'm going to show you how the presence of a bargain purchase option will alter the initial measurement of the lease liability as well as the interest expense that the lessee will record throughout the lease. Okay, so let's get to the details. We've got a three-year lease. We've got a discount rate of 8%. That's the lessor's implicit rate of return. It's known that a lessee, so the lessee is going to use that when they're doing a time value of money calculations for the present value of the lease uh, payments. Uh, we've got an annual lease payment of $300,000. Uh, each payment's made at the start of the year. So basically, we've got three years, a $300,000 payment made at the beginning of each year. And then the economic life of the asset is four years. That's going to become important because since there's a bargain purchase option, the right of use asset is going to be amortized over four years instead of the three-year lease term. Okay, now we'll get to that. But the present value of the lease payments, we're going to use the formula here for the present value of an annuity due. Okay, and our cash flow is 300000 Our discount rate, or R, is 8%. And then we've got three periods it's a, a, for the lease term here. So this here, this formula, present value of annuity deal, uh, due tells us that the present value of the lease payments is $834,979. But that is not going to be our initial lease liability. That's just going to be part of it because this lease contains a bargain purchase option. Bargain purchase option is just an option that the lessee has the right to buy this property that they're leasing right from the lessor, they have the right to buy it at the end of the lease, in this case, for $20,000. And it's reasonably certain that they're going to exercise that option. So that's a bar. When you hear someone say bargain purchase, basically the lessee has the right to buy this asset at the end of the lease and they're expected to do so. Okay, so we're expecting that they're going to pay $20,000 at the end of the lease to buy this thing from the lessor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat this $20,000 as a final payment to the lessor. So basically the lessor is gonna get $300,000 three times, but then at the very end of the lease, they're gonna get $20,000. So this 20,000 is gonna affect the initial lease liability. However, you don't just add it to the present value of the lease payments. Why? Because this $20,000 uh, that, that is gonna be paid uh, to the lessor, it's not gonna be paid till the end of the lease. So at the end of three years, the lessor is gonna get that. So what we need to do is take that 20,000 and discount that to its present value. So I've got here, if you remember the formula for a present value of a single cash flow, uh, just uh, the cash flow, which in this case is $20,000, divided by one plus R to the nth power. Uh, R again is 8%, N is three. So 20,000 divided by 1.08 to the third power is equal to $15,877. That's the present value of the bargain purchase option. You add that to the present value of the lease payments. And these two things together are going to be the initial lease liability. Okay, now in this example, we don't have any initial direct costs being incurred by the lessee or anything. So in this example, I've got it set up so that the initial right of use asset will be equal to the initial lease liability. Okay, so in that amount, $850,856. So let me show you, uh, so I'll get started showing you the lease amortization schedule here. And we've got our initial lease liability, 850, 856. Remember, that's the present value of the lease payments plus the present value of the bargain purchase option. Actually, this works similarly if you had a situation where there was a guaranteed residual value and the expected residual value was, was gonna be lower than what the lessee had guaranteed and then the lessee was thinking they were gonna have to make a payment at the end of the lease uh, pursuant to the, that guarantee they made about the residual value because they're gonna come in short. Uh, that would be another scenario where you would add to the initial lease liability, similar to this bargain purchase option. So again, because there's a final payment expected to the lessor, you're gonna give them 20 grand at the end of this lease. We need to discount that to its present value and add it to the initial lease liability. So we're gonna see in the journal entry, they're gonna debit right of use asset for 850,856 and credit 
the lease liability for 850856 dollars upon commencement of the lease. Uh, then, of course, you're going to have the very first lease payment. It's going to reduce the lease liability, uh, reduce the cash account. So let's get back to our amortization table. Oh, one final thing. So I just want to, I mentioned earlier, the right of use asset because, uh, that would be amortized over four years instead of the three-year lease term. Again, that's because there's a bargain purchase option. When there's a bargain purchase option or when the lease transfers ownership to the lessee, in those two cases, the lessee would amortize the right of use asset over the remaining economic life of the asset instead of the lease term. And I had said that the remaining economic life of the asset was four years. So that's why I'm amortizing it over four years, if you're wondering. Okay. And again, uh, to be clear, I said this is a finance lease. Um, and you know, just the presence of the bargain purchase option right there meets one of the five classification tests for this to be a finance lease. Um, so in any event, all right. So we've got our initial lease liability. Then immediately, day one of the lease, $300,000 lease payment brings the lease liability to $550,856. Multiply this number by the discount rate, the 8%, lessor's implicit rate, and that gives you the interest expense for the first year of the lease. So that 44,068 is 550,856 times 8%. That gives you that. Now, remember, the lease payments reduce the lease liability, but interest accrued on the lease liability, that increases it. So now we go 550, 856, plus the interest that accrued, so our lease liability goes up. Now, we're then going to go and we're going to have the next payment, 300000 It's going to reduce the lease liability. And then for the second year of the lease, we take that uh, 294925 multiply it by 8%. That's how you get the interest expense. And then the interest expense increases the lease liability and so forth. We have another payment, 300000 Okay. Now, what's different when there's a bargain purchase option? So you'll see if you go back to the video where there was no bargain purchase option, all the numbers were the same, the interest expense was lower because if you have the bargain purchase option, that increased the lease liability. It's higher, right? Because it got the present value of it got added. So that means there's going to be more interest expense. It also means that final period of the lease, there's going to be interest expense uh, accrued there as well. Because if there's no bargain purchase option, then right here when the final lease payment was made in that previous video, that particular example, the, the liability was extinguished. So there was no interest incurred in, in the final year. Uh, so when you have a bargain purchase option, there's going to be interest accrued in that final year of the lease. Uh, also, if there was, again, a situation like I mentioned before where the, the lessee was going to return the asset and it wasn't going to have the value that they had guaranteed. So the expected residual value is lower than a guaranteed residual value and they're expecting a, a payment to make a payment to the lessor at the end. Then in that case as well, you'd have the same scenario. So again, at that final $300,000 payment makes the lease liability to $18,519. You multiply that by 8%. You get the interest expense, which gets added to the lease liability, goes up to 20,000. And then that final, that bargain purchase option, when they say, okay, you know what, we're exercising that on the last day of the lease. So December 31st, 2026, you might see some people or textbooks put like January 1st, 2027, the first day after the lease, whatever, you're at the same, the same idea, you get it, right? So this is that final $20,000 payment. So that's the difference when there was no bargain purchase option, we just had, these three lease payments, but now we're assuming there's this extra payment at the very end, and that's what takes the lease liability to zero. So at that point, also with this at this end, uh, basically the the lessee is also going to have to debit an asset account, like the equipment account, to put this asset on their books. So I wanted to show you all the journal entries. Now again, the amortization expense that was just that right of use asset divided by four. So 212, 714. Now you make that for four years because you're, you're not amortizing over the lease term of three years. You amortize over four years. So this entry for the amortization is going to be made at the end of 2024, at the end of 2025. Uh, and then also when we go into, let me show you 2026 and 2027. So here's 2026 and we got the amortization again. And again, of course, each period, you know, you're, you're uh, recording the interest expense uh, for the fourth, excuse me, at the end of the third year, as I said, the, the lessee, they actually purchased the thing for 20,000. So you got credit cash for 20,000 and then debit an asset account. I just debited equipment. So they put this equipment on their books. Now the fourth year, remember the lease is done. 
Okay, so December 31st, 2027, you're not going to have any interest expense. Uh, you're not going to have any cash payments really because the lease ended r right here, right? So after three years. So why do we have this uh, journal entry here? And let me show you the full journal entry. So why do we have this journal entry here? Because again, when the lessee has, when the lease has a bargain purchase option, the lessee will amortize the right of use asset over the remaining economic life of the asset which in this case happened to be four years instead of the lease term, which was three years, okay? So even though here, like the lease has is done with, right? But now they need to go and finish, make that final journal entry to record the amortization expense.